All right, guys, welcome back to some more GK in Ranked with World of Warships here. We are having a pretty good time with the Ranked matches these days since they happen to be a little bit more focused on brawling. And as you know, that is what I enjoy the most. This is going to be a pretty nuts game, and I had to share it with you guys. I promise we will be getting into some other ships, but I've been on a bit of a battleship kick recently. And I've got a few more to show you guys, including this really good GK1, which starts out with a Citadel at 19 kilometers. We are playing a bit of a hybrid build here, still focused on the main guns and not going for the full secondary build. Although we do have some. The secondaries can be quite useful in ranked since we can be a little bit closer, but there are times where we want to be sniping some of these radar cruisers and getting rid of them early. In this map, you can see we don't really have the opportunity to just charge in like some of those previous battleship videos that I've been showing you guys. It certainly is fun to just W key in, but using some tactics and your brain just a little bit will help you win a few more games. And there are times where to set up a crossfire, you do need to go to the more open side of the map, like this case here. You know, our Schlieff in Moskva going for the eight line here. Well, we do need to send a battleship over to the B line and Vermont's a little too slow, so I had to go. And we're doing a pretty good job, honestly, with a bit of aim and RNG on our side, I won't deny it. Done some decent damage here into these guys, but we do have to be a little bit careful. There is an enemy Z-52 here against a Shimakaze, which probably wins that, although the Z is getting a little bit lower, as we can see on the Team HP bars there. But I still definitely need to be helping out our Shimakaze here. Unfortunately, we do lose our Schlieffen. The enemy team is pretty heavy on the 8-9 lines as well. So that allows us to push up a little bit here. Into potentially a Smolensk. <laughs> a terrifying threat. Uh, you don't see it as much anymore since it has been removed from sale. But this is one of the most terrifying Ichi spammers at this tier. Very, very difficult ship to take down since it's so small and lightly armored. We're just going to overpen it. Although at these angles, you can do some pretty good damage, but I'm really just waiting here for him to make a move. I'm not wanting to shoot until I know I can get a decently accurate salvo in. I don't want to just miss as soon as he, you know, just dodges when I fire. That's uh, not something I'm waiting for or wanting to do. And he does go flat broadside here, but yeah, it's... This one's flat broadside, so you can expect what's going to happen here. And I decide not to get greedy. That's one of the other things here. Notice we only got our front guns. Three overpens. That's going to happen. And he's going to smoke up and start farming us. But we don't take the Monty salvo. That's very important. Montana, even at 16 kilometers like that, can 30, 40k me in a GK if I go flat broadside there to try and get those Smolensk uh, salvos off. We also are trying to angle in to potential Z-52 torps here. So more reasons to kind of duck under this island here, not get greedy for those rear guns. Although it would have been nice to see a dev strike there, but we are going to be focusing on this Z-52 and trying to help our Shimakaze live. That's a, basically our lifeline on this flank. If we lose him, it's basically lights out. We've already lost the seven, eight, nine lines. So it is time to push, but in a smart way. It's not just a full W key in and Maybe it looks pretty simple here as far as, yeah, you don't want to be getting farmed by a Smolensk right off the bat, so you dip behind this island, but it is something that not everyone does or takes into account, and you should be thinking about that. Where can you push without exposing your ship to some very obvious damage? Now that we know where the Smolensk is, though, and that the enemy battleships are pretty far away, there's an opportunity for us to cut through the middle of the map here. We've done decent damage to start with, but we're going to have to do a lot more if we want to try and win this game. Smolensk caught bow in, and like I said, well, you do want to be shooting at them when they're angled. You will overmatch, and if you manage to hit a citadel, you're not going to overpen it this way. The length of that citadel is more than enough to arm that shell, and yeah, dev strike always feeling pretty good on something like a small heads. And the Monty here trying to deal with this Des Moines and myself. Not sure about his decision here to sit broadside or go even more broadside potentially, but as a GK, we're hoping for some big damage, but not guaranteed it. And we do all right. One Citadel there, but more importantly, we get him down around 20,000 HP. That should be a relatively simple follow-up salvo, at least at these angles here. Very fortunate for us that this Monty got caught broadside, but he does get taken, or the Des Moines does get taken down by the Ohio uh, behind us here. 
and we managed to bounce most of that Monty Salva. He must have launched that into our belt armor. That's like the only way we can bounce things there. Otherwise, yeah, I talk about the GK superstructure for a reason all the time because it takes so much damage. If he aims superstructure there, it's probably like 30k instead of the five that he got. We do get fortunate, and I'm kind of experimenting with sitting a little more broadside instead of fully angling in there. You can see that, you know, I wasn't as broadside that I could get fire all of my guns when he managed to shoot me, but I was broadside enough that maybe that was baiting him into shooting the broadside belt armor there. I'm trying to figure out a good angle there with it, uh, as I've been playing the GK a lot in these ranked battles, because, yeah, those, those uh, superstructure pens definitely hurt. And we're going to try and avoid the enemy curve first here. Not a very friendly engagement for us. Uh, he does have a bit of an advantage here with HP, at least to start with. And uh, I do want to extend this time as long as we can, because you should be always considering the score, right? We have 750 points to their 400 points. So a pretty massive lead that if we can hang on to, uh, should get us a pretty comfortable win here. I'm using my second to last heal though, so we do need to get into cover rather quickly. And that's 214,000 damage already. GK can certainly pump out the damage. So we've taken a reasonable amount in return. It's a good idea, though, to hide behind this island for a bit. Unfortunately, our Vermont did walk out broadside to the GK, so it's just me and this Shima. The Shima that we tried to help at the very beginning of the game, like I said, those DD engagements impacting those is very important. Notice he's got like 500 HP left. <laughs> yeah, so any less help that we had given him, uh, he would have died, and we would have been in a very bad situation here, since this enemy Ohio obviously doing quite well for himself on four kills. And we are out of heals now. Use my last heal here, and we're in some big trouble, since I probably can't kill an Ohio here. Uh, his fire, his secondaries do light us on fire here, and I'm gonna have to time this damage control to try and stay alive as long as I can. I'm, I'm pretty much dead at this point. I'm gonna try and stay alive as much as I possibly can. Once I get down to around 25-ish thousand HP, I use it at 28 here. Uh, I know I can survive two, maybe three salvos from his main guns. That's what I'm really looking at here. So even if we do take some more fire damage, that's okay. Um, this is a very calculated damage control, I would say, even though it is a damage control on a single fire, a little bit late into that fire. I'm trying to survive to get two, maybe three more salvos off at him. Uh, that's kind of the idea here, since I don't have a heal remaining. If I had a heal, that wouldn't be the right play, but sometimes you do have to damage control that fire. And as you can see, we've now lived through two more salvos of his, and that allowed us to get some decent damage off, putting him just under 10,000 HP. And now he gets his heal, which unfortunately, with this build, we actually don't get the fifth heal. Typically, I'm not using them in ranked. I usually don't live that long, but in this case, having that extra heal would have been nice. But that said, we still get up to 270,000 damage here. That last salvo does kind of hit his bow instead of the superstructure, so we don't quite get it. And this game actually ends in a win with 277,000 damage. We do get three kills, not quite enough to take down the GK or the Ohio at the end. But our Shima managed to clutch it out on 500 HP. Not an easy thing to do. He actually killed the GK there at the end. But that is a pretty quick ranked game, but a ton of damage. And using my brain a little bit more than some of these other matches where I've just clicked W and tried to brawl it out instantly. And you can see the results are just a little bit better. It won't always work out this way, but brawling is definitely a good thing in ranked. But doing it the right time will be better than just pushing the W key right at the start. And as for the build here, it is the one you have seen before here. Fairly aggressive. Uh, notice we are taking close quarters combat even. That over top of Emergency Repair Expert or Concealment, that is more of a ranked build though. In randoms, I would be definitely trying to find Concealment or Emergency Repair Expert uh, instead of this one. Still want those manual secondaries, they can be quite valuable at times. Uh, in random battles, a little less so though. Um, it's not easy to brawl in randoms. The opportunity that I had there coming around that island um, and then finding the Smolensk and then the Monty there, those don't really present themselves in random battles because there'd just be so many teammates ready to receive me on their team, where in ranked, uh, there's not quite enough people to, you know, leave a bunch of people camping in their spawn. The enemy battleships, of course, the Ohio coming around into our side uh, was behind an island, and that allowed me to make that play. And that's why I like ranked a lot. 
Uh, as for the upgrades here, this damage control party mod one, giving me a little more immunity time, like I said at the end there. A uh, bit of a weird damage control, but sometimes you do have to think about that. Um, how long do I need to live, or can I possibly live? Maximizing that time, at least when the heals aren't available. Aiming systems, even though we are running more secondaries here on the commander and on the upgrades here with the ledge mod, I still want aiming systems. As you saw, we were doing some decent citadel damage there, even managing to dev strike that Smolensk bow on at close range. Um, 420s, uh, I have, don't really talk about this on the GK much, I realize, but I just use them. Um, there's not a huge difference, though. If you look into the detailed statistics around shell flight time, the pen, DPM versus uh, a little more alpha damage, it's very minor differences. Um, but I just use the bigger guns. That's kind of how I've always done it. Not a huge difference there, and I honestly can't really give you a good answer as to why. I just kind of do. Um, but you can use whichever ones you feel like. GK can work quite well with either one. And in ranked, you might even want the extra reload for those brawling opportunities. Thank you very much for watching this one. Um, I promise we will be playing some other ship classes in ranked this week. Don't you worry. It's not just battleships. I've just been enjoying them quite a bit in ranked since random battles. I haven't been able to do these brawls quite as much. And ever since I started playing ranked, I don't know, maybe a month ago, a little more often, it's... It's been fun again, so I will be playing other things though. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.